I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. And welcome to another Tales from the Holocron Vault. Today I got with me down here, uh, my co-pilot, Solo Wookie. Solo Wookie, give it to him. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I guess it must be Christmas. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas, we got the Christmas Trooper. Uh, uh, where are you? There you are. Give it Leaky. What's up, guys? Uh, make sure you're checking out that Low Brick stuff. It's doing really good. He did uh, live a couple again. Get on. Buy me Legos. Speaking of people who <laughs> like, who like Santa Claus and Christmas Troopers, Pete, Dollar Bin Dig and give it to him. I do. Stop making fun of my Christmas Troopers. <laughs> I almost bought you one of those today. Uh, you have something in the mail, though. Uh, so maybe one of these episodes, we're going to have to open it. <laughs> hey, uh, guys, if you're watching Mando, then you're in luck because we love Mando, too. Hopefully we got this out before it ends. But they did just bring up the name of one of my by far favorite of all time characters in the whole thing. Uh, he is my uh, gaming tag for a lot of the Star Wars video games, the mobile ones. So if you see the name... Thrawn, come up. Odds are you're playing with me. Um, Handsome devil. Yeah, so I really love this character. We've been kind of holding off doing it because I don't understand how to do it because it's so vast. Especially considering for the use of those that don't use of those that don't know. That's a way to start it. For the use that don't... For I'll users don't be in the knowledge of the use. Yeah. For, <laughs> for those that you don't know, there's actually two strong storylines. Uh, Timothy Zan, 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 oh man, I'm all screwed. Zahn, Zahn thank you very Zahn. much. Timothy Zahn had originally wrote uh, pretty much like three epic uh, arcs for this storyline uh, back in the day. They actually became comic book form two here. Gives you uh, his first appearance there in Heir to the Empire 1, which mm -hmm. I know you all are looking at. But also Last Command kind of gets into a little bit of other stuff. Some of the stuff in it... Um, now, with that first series, part of the reason that he rewrote it, too, when it went over to the Disney product was, like, they originally were, um, there's another series that was coming out at that time, and they told Timothy that, and he said this before, like, he wasn't allowed to do certain things, okay? He couldn't really, even though he could go back to 32 ABY, he couldn't really explore the uh, Clone Wars era, because you mm -hmm. were supposed to stay away from that a little bit. Also, too, uh, George was trying to set up um, Dark Empire, that was going to be a postscript. So like you had to kind of, they were asking him to put stuff in there and some, a lot of stuff he actually was like, yeah, I'm just going to either cheapen it up or I'm not going to put it in there, uh, which was nice, I guess, but it kind of did leave some air in there. So it was really great that they gave him another shot at because he's by far the best novel writer of Star Wars. I mean, there's a lot of people that are up there, like the Greys are up there, the Wangos are up there, like they're great, but like he by far, in my opinion, I think a lot of other people's opinions, obviously that's all it is, did In some of the best. In my opinion, by far the best. Yeah, he does some of the best. And what makes him even, what what showed his his ability was when he came up with this, the new Thrawn trilogy. And like the old Thrawn trilogy was good. Um, obviously had, there was a part towards the end in that last cover where they do the, the, the clone type thing again. And you know how I feel about clones. Um, but, yeah, right. But in his first book, he kind of gives you a replay and it almost started off to, yeah, it starts to think, feel a lot like heir to the empire because Thrawn is out in kind of a wild space area. He shoots down like a, uh, a little bit different because he shoots down like one of these uh, planes that were just trying to chart it from the, the Republic at the time uh, or the Imperial. Sorry. In the old one, it was from like the Republic in this time he shot down one that was from the Imperial because it's the early days of the Imperial uh, the Galactic Imperial, and they were trying to like figure out how to map wild space. Obviously, we know why that is now because Aaron Gall shows up there and they're trying to find a place for once again my favorite thing, cloning Palpatine, because they couldn't just get away from that. But they find him in a hut, they pick him up, and it actually, uh, this character who becomes pretty important, um, what's his name again? In Vento, Eli yeah, Vento. I Eli Vento. Seeing, uh, yeah, Eli Vento. Eli Vento kind of comes down, finds him. He's in his early ages of the Empire. He doesn't have much to do. He's still kind of at the Academy and everything else. He picks up Thrawn, takes Thrawn back. The Emperor's like, yeah, this guy's going to join the Academy and you're going to be kind of with him the whole time, which people didn't understand why this was happening because at the time, the Imperial Cadet Academy 
didn't take alien species. Like it was all like Coruscantians and like similar type species to the human race. Um, it was really cool going through that. And we'll go through that storyline a little bit more because they actually did put out a comic book. Well, they put out six comic books that touch base with a lot of that first novel. One of the novels that is actually cool and something you should look when you're looking for some of these novels is they have different um, cover vests. And a lot of them were like con, con exclusives or like just 700 print exclusives. The next book has to deal with Thrawn. He, he, Timothy ends up bringing Thrawn back to this place where he actually does get to write in some of the Clone War stuff. Now he runs into Anakin Skywalker and as Anakin, not as Darth Vader yet. And he, when he runs into Anakin Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker and him kind of hit it off. They reference it in here that he knew him from before. And then he runs into Darth Vader at the end and says like, Oh, you seem like a guy that I used to know, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. No, no, in this, this, this is timeline here. This is right before he turns to Vader, correct? Like this is so there's Anakin, a Anakin before he kind of gets chopped up, but he's kind of dark already. Like he's he's already, you know, his eyes uh, are kind of turning a little bit. And no, already, I mean the book shows it like that, but like in this actually, and I'll get to that because the, the new because there's so there's two series now by Tim. Uh the first one is that one, and they reference that he knew Darth Vader was Anakin. So he's kind of references that he'd met him before in the newest books that just came out. He, they definitely flush that out a lot more. And it's, um, Anakin's looking for Padme and he runs into Thrawn and Thrawn helps him. Uh, they actually go to like the black sphere outpost. They go to like, uh, Jakku, I think or something. They go some, so they Jakku. go to a couple of, a couple of, they want to go to Jakku. Or maybe not Jakku, but they definitely go to the Black Sphere outpost and they do a lot of like they he ends up helping saving them and he thinks of it. Now, but both in that book, uh, the original Thrawn theory and everything else, they kind of flush out that Thrawn at that time period left because he thought that the Empire was uh inferior. And what was actually going on in the unknown region at this point is a couple of things that are very interesting, and they kind of change stuff around. Uh so originally there was like a force dampening creature that you could have. That doesn't exist so much anymore. I mean, maybe it does. We don't just don't know about it yet. But back in these books, when they rewrote them, that in in the unknown region, they were running into these um, these enemies, and they didn't really flush them out as much. They're starting to reveal kind of who they were. Um, but they had these things called Skywalkers, and that's like it's kind of corny, but kind of funny because he runs into Skywalker, and he's like, "Oh, you can do what the, our Skywalkers does," and Anakin's obviously like, what the heck are you talking about? The Skywalkers for the Chiss is they're these precog type things. They're young. Usually by 13, they start to lose their gift. And they pretty much use them because they don't have hyperspace lanes. They use them to be able to like hyper jump, like, you know, like hit it, hit it, Chewy. So they don't have those lanes. They don't have them mapped out. So instead of using like a an AI system, I via the like Falcon where it was an old droid that could shoot him through there. They actually have to right. use young kids from the chess. Well, yeah. So that's originally how it was. Now they can actually hire these pirate type of guys who can do it too, a little bit older. We'll and get into that. The space whales. They can. Yeah. Watch out to space whales. Cause they can do it too. The short jumps. So we'll get into all that a little bit later. Cause it plays out pretty well, but originally, so he's using those things to jump around, runs into Anakin, the uh, children runs into Anakin Skywalker, helps him out. <laughs> And it's like, oh, this guy isn't good enough. So he goes back to the Chalice Academy and it's like, uh, we'll try to find some other allies because they run into what pretty much would be a ruffian, like a dictatorship type species that's trying to take over and go against the Chiss. But uh, it flushes it out that that's not really who the enemy is. There's a big bad and they haven't revealed who the big bad is yet. And we'll once again get into who the big bad is or who we think it is. But a little bit later. Um, tell me, tell me. I can't contain myself. Come on. Okay, I, I can tell you. Yeah. All right. So when, what? So when he's out there fighting in his he, there's a thing called the Grisk because they bring it up in that series. They bring up these Grisks, and the Grisk have a lot of very, very seem very similar to the Yuvon or the the Vong, uh, Yuzon Vong, which was what they had used originally. You know, Invasion One, the Dark Horse comic. Like that's how they used Thrawn in the first series to like, that was the whole point. He had come over and was like, yeah, they're coming. They're in dark ships. Now 
he had also the weird part is when they did it in the original uh, heir to the empire he had called them something kind of else too and just talked about the blacking off and the yuzan vong later on had gotten their name uh which is kind of interesting um and now they're calling them the grisk it's only interesting because with the new series that they came out after they came out with the original thrawn series they've now come out with ascendance which is the first one the first book says that there's some big bad at the end and it might not even be the grisk it might be somebody else because mm. they just they, they the big bad appears at the end of the book which it's a book not a comic book so we don't actually get to see pictures it's, it's like the equivalent of a sh the novel book it's equivalent of a shadow and the shadow says something we'll keep testing them with different species to find out their weakness and then eventually when we can weaken them up enough we'll take them over the one part that's really cool is like originally in Heir to the Empire, Thrawn was like all in with being an Imperial pretty much. Like he had loyalty to the Empire. In this new trilogy, he you, he clearly doesn't. Um, let's get into some of the comics real quickly and maybe we can explain it a little bit better. Um, Thrawn protects this guy, the... Um, Eli a lot, like goes around and Eli's like, man, they're picking on me at the Academy. They're picking on Thrawn. Thrawn already has his martial skills. This is where you kind of see that, like, maybe he isn't somebody that, that was lost on a planet. Maybe there's something else going on and there's some other type of attention uh, to detail. So he gets promoted a lot. And when Thrawn gets promoted much to the chagrin of a lot of other people in there, a lot of the human species, he also brings that character Eli around. He keeps bringing like uh, at one point, Grand Moff talk well at the time Tarkin Moff Tarkin gives him a, a like battle type upgrade and when he gets that upgrade so does Eli he because he ends up surpassing Eli uh, in the ranks and Eli then gets like to be his assistant and he's like well this is kind of humiliating so then Tarkin gives him like Tarkin gives Thrawn a raise so then he's technically his superior and then people give Eli a hard time but. Whatever, it keeps going around. So sorry about this part. Thrawn goes around and, and the Empire at this point kind of gives him a free range of what he's going to do. So they send him on all these little special like missions, but they kind of let him do whatever he wants. And Thrawn doesn't follow like the total Imperial Code. The Imperial Code is like, you just go and do what we tell you and that's it. Well, Thrawn will do all type of tactical stuff. And one of the things he does is he squashes a rebellion of Wookiees, uh, which is unfortunate because he kind of just takes them in. But then he, he gets a promotion for that. He wanted, oh, to many. he wanted to get a nice rug there. What's that? He wanted to get a nice rug. Yeah, yeah right. Nice looking so, rug. So many bad names I have for Thrawn, the Grand Moff Tarkin, and Admiral Thrawn. And the things they do to Wookiees is unkind. They're Wookiee and, haters. Yeah, it's yeah, funny because right that, that's terrible. where he gets it. That right there is where he gets upgraded to an Admiral. So then he becomes the Admiral Thrawn. It's still going out there, and he runs into this character. So wrong. Price. Do you want to talk about Price there a little bit, Leaky? Because you asked me some questions about her. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Yeah, good. I just um, – so as you guys know, I'm not a big – not wasn't big into the comic books until I went when my comic hunt with uh, – kind of like a Wookiee hunt. I went on a comic hunt with uh, with Marco, and uh, he got me the, the Thrawn books. And the first one, I, I didn't get one and two, but I got three and. And Price, who I remember from Rebels being kind of this, you know, kind of, uh, you know, mean, uh, kind of all in on the Empire. But she started out as like a like a diplomat. Her family owned a mine and she was going to have to sell to some local scumbag. So instead, she sold to the Empire. So I was just curious how her relation. Thrawn was military and a lieutenant when I first when I first read about him. And she was like a diplomat or a mining. So I was just curious about the relationship because later she ends up surpassing him, right? She ends up, she's like his boss or higher. Kind man. of, kind of. So how it works, how Cart works is you're right. He, I, I skipped kind of over that. So what in those novels, they kind of say that Thrawn at the time, and this is where he gets all his tactical stuff. And it goes further down into the books. Like he wasn't part of the child's defense force. And we'll kind of break down how they work in a little bit because there's two hierarchies. It, that brings up a good point. In the chalice system, there's two hierarchies. There's the families, which are kind of like, would be like, um, you know, just there, there's like seven, nine families. There's nine families, which would pretty much have one rule and they rule most of the planet and stuff. And then there's the defense force, which rules pretty much all the actions of war and all that type of stuff. 
it kind of works the same way here with the empire. Like when you look at somebody like Grand Moff Tarkin, he's actually kind of an exception. Same thing with Count Dooku back when he was in, in the separatists. Like there's not a lot of people who are kind of in charge of their planet and also are huge military tacticians. Like, and price because she sold the mine there and was already big on her planet, decided she wanted to stay in that. So she kind of becomes not like an oligarchy, but it, she becomes one of those like elitists, like where like, we're going to be in charge of stuff and the empire always help those people out. So when you see a lot of these moths or a lot of these governors, quote unquote, that was the reward for turning over. Those were systems that originally the original Republic had kind of forgotten or let go and these people then either raiders had come in or somebody else and they loved the empire because the empire, it was their only other choice. It was either you give up everything or, Hey, we'll give you a government promotion. So yeah, it was easier for her. She didn't have to go to the cadet Academy. She didn't have to go anything. And they just started putting rank on her and they actually eventually made her uh, the head of the fall. The interesting part is that you brought up the mind and her parents because they go back to that it, both in the comics and the book, they go back to that and that's kind of uh, back to that planet. And when they go back to that planet, that's a lot of where like Thrawn and her intertwine. I know they do like the karate thing, like in the dojo thing or whatever. Yeah, the thing. Thrawn Jitsu he teaches. Yeah, Thrawn yeah. Jitsu, yeah. Which he also uses later on robots. But like, I understand that portion of it, but where they really start intertwining, because at one point Thrawn comes into a room and yeah, he's got the, ch he's got the, uh, not the chalice, what's the, the Crimea, which is his, his, uh, star destroyer and they like introduce him and he kind of is like the younger admiral at that point and Crimea. price is huh crime crime yeah and price Crimea. is the price is already kind of like up there in the ranking because she's already in the meeting um well, but anyways things i liked about the comic books and it's with all of this is like when you first meet these guys on the show like we already knew thrawn we were waiting for thrawn but Price, I had no idea she was. And she came in just kind of like this smarmy, you know, Captain Admiral type. So they always give them a backstory. And it always is like they're trying to help their family. They get sucked into the Empire. And then they they kind of turn bad. And, and then she befriends Thrawn because I was like, well, she's already close with Thrawn. And they just make it seem like everybody in the Empire is buddy-buddy. But um, I like that. I like having the backstory of... Uh, Thrawn's associations. Yeah, so I'm not sure she was ever a nice person, and no, I'm she's not sure not. she uses Wookies as slaves in her mind. I don't she like does. her. <laughs> she bad, does bad people. Back on her planet, her Obi Wan Kenobi looking dad is crying because he's going to lose his mind. And yeah. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think she was ever that that nice of a person, and I'm not quite sure she's actually. I would say she's a. Uh, She's an associate of Thrawn, and but that which is a good point to bring up too. Like Thrawn now, unlike the old ways, he literally is like has nothing to do with. He's just you really start seeing him be all about himself, and, and the price relationship is one that does. So they go to the planet where the Bataan, right? They go to that planet and they're hunting somebody. They're hunting somebody called the Night Swan, who pretty much is just like a rebellious group, and they send Thrawn and the Crimea down there. And Thrawn's like just blowing up all the ships and pretty much could have subdued the whole thing by himself. Price is on the planet at this point. But because at this point he's still an admiral and people don't understand why he's an admiral, there's like an, a lot of IBD officers, like the intelligent officers going after him. There happens to be one on this planet, uh, this guy right here, uh, Gudry. He isn't there quite for that, but he's just down there for a couple of other things. Thrawn thinks very highly of this guy, by the way, because he has had run-ins with him before. And just because he's an alien, he didn't really kill him, even though he's kind of a jerk to him. Just doesn't matter. But so he's down there and he runs into Price. And when he runs into Price, he finds out that Price is actually on the planet, not trying to help the Empire, not trying to squash the rebellion, but instead putting her family first and trying to save her family. Price offs him. And then what Price does is go she yeah. Josh Gudry. Yeah. And then this guy, Night Swan, is still there. And she decides to cover up the killing of the IBD officer, Gudry, and ends up destroying the planet, pretty much. So Good. when she gets back, she has a meeting with Thrawn. And Thrawn's like, hey, remember, he's an admiral, just not a grand admiral yet. Goes, hey, uh, he does his usual questioning thing. And this is something you see a lot of it. And you saw it kind of in Rebels, and we'll get into it later. But like, he kind of goes like, hmm, well, you know... 
very interesting that you decided to like decimate the planet like wasn't necessary had it under control we might have to look into that and see like it doesn't make a lot of sense and he always plays like this like i'm not so smart type character right and she catches on so as soon as eli and everybody else leaves she's like hey listen because she's like oh well the emperor will be really happy with this like he's going to give awards out for this he's like yeah he might but we're probably going to have to have some people look into it because we're also missing you know, intelligence officer, and like this doesn't make sense. So, man, Gundry, yeah, where's Gundry at? All of a sudden, like Eli leaves, right? And and so does uh, what's his name, the other imperial officer guy. And um, she's like, Look, I'll make you a deal, dude. Uh, I'm gonna let you take full credit of this. You know, you want to be in charge of stuff, nobody will ever pick you out over again. Uh, and just like, don't. Just don't let him know what's going on. And it's, at this point, you know, she's becoming a governor of La Fall. So what does he care? He sees he, like his end. And then he gets the uh, he gets to go to the emperor and he gets his grand admiral in this wearing the white uh, tunic. And he gets the whole thing there, which seems pretty cool. Um, but but that really developed. That was kind of flushing out the backstory. Why it turned into rebels. She then at that point has to call him again, because, as you know, uh, our favorite group of bandits here, uh, rebellion people come up and have to deal with her. Her story doesn't end that well, though. If you recall in Rebels, uh, this is kind of her end clip right here. She gets chased down by uh, the Lothal Wolves and then like is on the ship and pretty much blowing up and she takes one and just, like she could just pretty much gets disintegrated. Yeah, she's so a follow for a Brissima of, uh, of uh, Rebels. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I was shedding a cheer when when she went. But like, like I get that you were kind of greedy and trying to take care of the mines. But she was already like the mines. Like Wookie said, they were already kind of using slave. Well, they were really using cheap labor, and then they went to slave labor anyways. Afterwards, when she re, you know, like she's not a nice person. So like, oh, good riddance. Like who cares? She's dead. That's fair. Agreed. Don't bring her back. I don't think you need to call her. So smarmy on rebels, and then the first like page of the comic you gave me. She's like at this party and she's wearing a dress and she's kind of nice and she gets blackmailed by some admiral that brings us to her quarters. And I'm like, oh, now we're going to hear her backstory because I hated her on Rebels, man. When those wolves were chasing her down, I'm like, eat her up. Yeah, eat her up. <laughs> well, I mean, like, OK, so to say that she wasn't, I don't know, like she seemed like somebody who was just disillusioned with like, oh, my parents own a mine. So we're going to like it wasn't like the mine they owned was like as great as everybody remember you know like no, they're doing some I think they arrested her mom and her dad was crying and yeah. she, so she was kind of making deals so i don't know it, it's i i just always love how the comics try to add a little sympathetic flavor to somebody who is just like pure like kind of a d-bag in the in the shows yeah. see that's, that's fun. Like a slave owner sympathetic yeah, yeah, that's no kind of sympathy here. I would have tied her to four <laughs> spaceships and flown them off in all different directions, drawn and, and then, quartered. Yeah, so like I, I took it reading it a little bit differently, and maybe it's because I read the novels too. I took it, it may the comics did, I guess, now that you mentioned it, kind of soften her up again. I kind of took it like she was a little bit of a spoiled brat that was kind of out for herself. Like, like, oh, I can't believe all this bad luck's hacking to us, but like when you look at it you guys, you kind of put yourself in that situation, right? Like you yeah. weren't running. The well, we are right. When they arrested her mom, he was like, well, let your mom go. If you give me 30% of the mind, she was like, right. no way. I don't yeah. care about mom. I want my 30%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was it. She wasn't even, yeah, and then huh? she wants, and then she kills the IBD officer. Cause she wants to like save her parents, which didn't make much sense. Cause it's like, well, I think she's doing that. Cause she felt bad that she got arrested in the first place. Either way, she deserved to die at the end of the day. She deserved to die, and she did. Uh, so that kind of ends her portion of the story. But getting to that Rebels thing, there was a lot of cool stuff that went there, and they kind of did talk about it a little bit more. Like this right here, you know, he after he was going down to help her out, you could tell that he was trying to study the artwork. Um, they really did a lot of that in the novels. Like he really does find out how people fight, how their actions are, how everything's going on uh, through a lot of the artwork. But he also... Uh, and you kind of see it too here, like with the Sadula thing where he arrests her. Because remember on Rebels, she was supposed to be like a servant, right? And he kind of let her play along as a servant for a long time. And that's not what you're supposed to be doing as an Imperial Grand Admiral 
Or as an officer, what you're supposed to do is arrest her immediately. And then you send her to the torture droid and they torture all the information. But he won't follow the protocols that he doesn't agree with with the Empire. He doesn't do a lot with the Chalice because he was trying to change that around. But with the Empire, he has no, he doesn't have as much loyalty. Like he just will break the rules to break the rules. And he follows her, like follows her around, tries to flesh it out, knows who she is, knows who Chopper is, and just lets them kind of like get into it so that he can eventually reveal that he knows and try well, to throw them. There was no Tyrion Lannister, Arya there. He knew right who she was from the beginning. No, and yeah. I think that he's a smarter tactical. But I, I hate to call it a tactical genius, but he is a smarter tactical no, you're right. genius in that in that sense where he's not going right off into the imperial way of of the uh, uh, droid, you know, just beating them down for information. He is he is absolutely cunning and deceitful, and he is feeding you a little bit of nice, even though he's very firm and he's just slowly drying until he has to force, you know, more and more, but he, he teases the information out of you slowly. And I think it kind of, um, mentally almost kind of stimulates him a little bit like, Oh, you know, I have the upper hand and I'm, I'm pulling one over on you and getting the information. And it's, I mean, it's a very, uh, human characteristic kind of thing to do. And I think that's part of the, the great reason that so many people love Thrawn is because it, there, there is that bit of true psychotic intrigue to him. Yes. What's well, that creeper factor too, right? Wookie, like he, you know, he enjoys art, but then when you learn more and more about it, he's not really liking the art because he appreciates it. He wants to like own a piece of like his, vanquished enemies you know like <laughs> that that is, well, I mean, he also wants to know how to overcome his enemies yeah. and not just his enemies but everybody out in the yeah. world i mean if you if, if you study people's you know basis or their faith or their histories i mean it, it, through time we've obviously in history learned that that is a way to overcome because you can use things against them that they believe yeah. in. And that's absolutely what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Very samurai like Thron Jitsu that he probably learned it way back then. Did you well, guys that, ever see that Jet Li movie Hero? It reminds me of that yeah. where he yeah. wanted to learn the calligraphy. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Because by understanding that he'll know how to defeat the swordsman like that. So that actually is a good point. Back back in, back <laughs> yeah. No, but in the novels they they do they they expand on that and that's exactly what he's doing. And it's kind of nicer because in the original three arcs, <coughs> because they're all trilogies. So like in the original three, three trilogies, which is, we'll just call it the original arcs. In the original arcs, they just keep saying he's a mastermind. He's a genius. He's a this and that. Well, they really dig into that deep in how he became it. And you're right. He start, he doesn't just study the ones who won. He studies the ones who lost. He studies both of them. He studies what victories they had to figure out what techniques actually worked and then where they went wrong, which is really, I mean, it's so cool. Like it's, it's like the art of war type thing, right? Like he's, he's yeah. doing all this crazy stuff. And I really like that. They kind of just let Timothy go free and do whatever he wanted with it. Now rebels kind of simplified and genius, that. genius writing, genius writing. Yeah. Yeah. Now rebels kind of simplified that and pulled that down, but you do kind of see it through certain parts. Um, you know, you have this part, you can't see the screen that well, but there's Callus in the background where he um, arrests Callus, and Callus is one of the Falcoms. And now, Falcom, there's more than one, obviously. The main one that everybody knows is Tana. Like, Ahsoka Tana was the main and, Falcom. And they, they arrest him because he's a traitor. Right, but typically, if you were to do that, you would automatically send him to Torture Droid or kill him. Sure, Thrawn sure. doesn't do that. Thrawn no. sets it up so that he can find, because he knows that he might be a fulcrum but he's not the fulcrum which would be ahsoka tana so he right. tries to set it up to find out who the true fulcrum is and plus he also wants to sucker in the rebels because he thinks he can get all the rebels there and he kind of does like he's kind of right with a lot of the stuff um total, total weird side note like uh go back to that picture again real quick this one the fulcrum one now as an art collector him being an art collector if you notice he is very um artistically pleasing to the eye with the white and the blue skin and the red eyes. And he's very like well thought out. If that makes sense. As so high cheekbones. <laughs> I definitely like, uh, um, 
that way I actually do like how they drew him and they started redrawing what he looked like. The old way he looked a little more trekky ugh, and like crazy. <laughs> but, um, so that being said, he did bring back uh, this character to Rebels brought back this character. Riku was from, he originally was from the Ruck, first Ruck. one. Rock. 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 Yeah. Rock. He originally was from the first, uh, arc the first three arcs um but it was at a different timeline like the timelines are way different now and kind of like what they did and what they couldn't do um we'll talk but yeah so they brought that character in and it showed that he because that would not that's not a character that's like accepted by the empire at the time right like you're not allowed to bring those alien assassin type species into like even when darth vader did it with the like no incinerating and blah blah blah, blah they weren't really generations. Yeah, you could see that Thrawn wasn't using the regular Imperial people that he had. This was originally in the original trilogy arcs. He brought this in after the Empire. He brought that character in after the Empire had uh, pretty much decimated. So hmm. um, the last part that you always see and is a big part is he's here. And for a guy that sees everything, you kind of see and go, huh? And the little space whales are about to fly him out. And you got Ezra. The funny part about this, though, is at the end, he goes to Ezra and turns and says something to the effect of, like, you're going to go, you're going to have the same fate as me. Which is very interesting. Because remember when I was talking about the Skywalker Mm -hmm. precogs? In those three novels, one of those precogs get caught by the Grisk. And the Grisk is trying to remember figure out the lanes too. And Thrawn realizes that the, the Skywalkers quote unquote, the kids that they use to travel through time space, that is very similar to the force. And my theory is he came back to the empire, not because he wants to help Emperor Palpatine out, but he knew that sky that Anakin Skywalker was there and Anakin Skywalker, unlike their uh, Skywalkers who lost their abilities still was pretty strong in the force. So if he could have find adult force users, they could stop using kids and they could use the adult force users to figure out all the hyper lanes and, and speed jumps through, through the unknown region. Now, the question that always comes up is, well, where they go? We do know a couple things. We do actually know these, these are Canon. Uh, one, we know that he did not come back to the empire within the living time period of, First Palpatine non-melting clone Palpatine. Because in one of the comic books, Palpatine mentions Thrawn's gone and he's not coming back. Uh, Number two, we also know... um, Well, the the question, Marco, is knowing that we saw the name drop in Mando Mm -hmm. and knowing that if you just watch the shows, you're not familiar with the novels, you're not familiar with the comics, Thrawn disappears when he's talking to Ezra. Mm -hmm. And then he he's name dropped again, which of course, immediately everybody was like, Oh, Ezra, Ezra, Ezra. So um, I'm, I'm just curious as not a book reader. And this is where you're going. Um, what hap- What's going on with Thrawn and how much do they mention him between when you last see him in rebels, the entire trip, the entire original trilogy. And then when he's name dropped on Mando, what, you know, what's he up to? What's he doing? So, well, we know two things. We know that, but the big horse character, actually told Thrawn before Thrawn was trying to kill him that he couldn't kill him and then told him that, by the way, some tentacles are going to grab you and do what happened. We know that he went to the outer rim. Now, let's pull up a map real quickly. I'll kind of explain it. If you guys have your... um, I'll do a time clock so I can kind of explain what the map looks like. Too bad Jen's not here because she loves it. Put this on big screen or maybe we'll send a link or something to it. This is actually the map of pretty much what we know of the galaxy this far. There's a red line and a dot on it. That is where the chalice pretty much would be in the unknown region. That's at like nine o'clock on this map. Uh, The core obviously would be the center part of the clock. If you go to one o'clock halfway up the, which would be the hand would be Mandalore. Um, If you go to just past nine, probably 10 o'clock would be Exegol. A little bit past that, three quarters of the way down, would be where they had Star Killer Base, which would be a lot, uh, you know, the ice planet. I'm not going to try to mess that one up. Hmm. Uh, Acho To would be below nine o'clock. So that would be roughly around eight o'clock, between eight and nine o'clock, which is, you know, a Jedi temple is there. Uh, hypothetically, we think 
speaking of Mando, that the other Jedi Temple might be more towards uh, like the Coruscant type area. We don't know quite where they're going to put it. We've seen that on older maps. And Coruscant, like Corellia, and that would be more in the middle towards the core where the big bright light is. And at the bottom, obviously, at 12 o'clock, you will have more like Bespin. And a little bit to the left of that is Endor, such like that. 12 and, or 6 o'clock. Or, or 6 there. o'clock. Sorry, sorry, 6 o'clock. At 12 o'clock, you'd have Datooine. Um, so at 12 o'clock, you'd have like Datooine and Old Man Tell, stuff like that. Kashiki, for those Wookiee fans, would be more towards 3 o'clock. And so would Kessel. So Kashiki would be halfway out of this map, and Kessel would be all the way. So the point being, um, and then the outer rim is almost where the red, uh, so 6, it would be 5 o'clock. And actually, where you don't see the spiral of blue anymore, that's technically the outer rim. We do for you, know for you folks listening, if you're trying to picture this universe picture we're talking about. Yeah, I did a terrible if one, time. Of, if one of your say you use that uh, good blue toilet bowl cleaner and one of your children uh-huh. flushes a flashlight down your toilet, that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> you guys, are you guys seriously making f- like nobody has a maps? Lot of label it? maker labels just thrown in the toilet down. Going down <laughs> yeah, because when, like you were saying, the outer rim, I was thinking was the outer rim of the toilet bowl, <laughs> and the center is where the flashlight is. Okay, so if if we have any hey, like now, computer is. Okay, once again, if we have anybody who's like an expert in computer like graphics, feel free to <laughs> ring me up down below in the email and we'll make my graphics better. Well, the best I, I can no. do is search the interwebs for pictures you're and try to draw you're, lines you're, on it. Your graphic of that, uh, your graphic of that is perfect. It, it is absolutely 100% perfect. It is absolutely 100% accurate. But when you look back at the at the whole galaxy, the whole yeah. nebula, right. that is literally what it looks like is a swirling motion all the way to a center of a bright light, and it, it blue toilet bowl cleaner with a flashlight in the middle of the yeah. toilet. So yeah. we'll go we'll go again from twelve o'clock. We'll stay start at twelve o'clock. Datooine's at twelve o'clock. You start going to like one ish one almost between one and two. You got like Mandalore. You start going to. Three o'clock, you've got Kessel and Kashiki, pretty much. You Kashyyyk. go down, yeah, Kashiki. You go keep, you keep going down. You got like the mid rim at two, three, four ish. You go all the way down to six, then that's where you start going into Dagobah, Mustafar, or Mustaf, you know, the Sith planet. Um, and Tatooine is kind of over past six o'clock, going towards seven o'clock. You also have Endor over there. By the time you get to eight o'clock, you're at. Ocho, to- where where uh, Luke Skywalker threw the freaking lightsaber into the water. Okay, that's where you got. You got that. Wait, another Jedi. Where's, where's Princess Leia's home planet? Where's all the rides? Oh, there is. The- <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Look, I can't add. A, I can show you where it would be, but I can't draw on this. These I pre-draw on these and then put them out. Okay, and Matt then not- Skywalker. If if the planet's missing. How can you tell if it was removed from the oh jump? Oh, my God. I'm sorry. That, I just haven't <laughs> added it in. Then at 9 o'clock, you have my red dot, which is pretty accurate to where the Chalice, uh, the Chiss uh, Empire, or the Chiss uh, part of the Unknown Region would be. If you go past 9 o'clock towards almost 10 o'clock, you get the Sith, uh, eventually the Sith death planet of uh, where Palpatine's melted self shows up. And Star Killer Base is a little bit more towards eleven o'clock. There, in the middle, we have, uh, you know, the core, and in the core planets, ones that you might know, probably the core portion straight at twelve o'clock is Coruscant, and then a little bit to the right, you get to uh, Corellia at like the three o'clock portion there. So that's as much as I'm going to explain this map. Uh, feel free, I don't know, maybe we'll just do a big map blow up sometime, or get somebody who knows to work a, how to work a computer better than I do. Um, either way, that yeah, and, look, look it up. There, they have this online yeah. all over. Oh, yeah, the place. you can, you can, look you can up the edit. Star Wars there's, there's some real cool ones where you can like edit yeah. and like put what you want to. I mean, it is a mess, so you kind of have to know where you're looking for to get some of the things to hit. But sure. as far as like on the math, but yeah, there's people that build map builders, uh, and that's what that was. I mean, that was a map builder that I just added on to. So, um, yeah, there, there's tons of these maps out there. Please go look and Google and check them out, they're really cool to see. I didn't know we were going to get that deep into it, but where the red dot is where I uh, 
pretty much figured that the chist is is where Thrawn wants to be, and where technically he went would be almost like diagonally across in the black portion. However, it very well could be just further out where he's at. And if you get out there, you might run into the Yuvan Yang. Um, so you brought up the map and Thrawn in the space lanes. Is this, you know, I thought that was very interesting. Like his overarching goal or his seems to be like he wants to control all these things to understand the lanes, so he can... Is it is it a power grab? Does he want to control more of the planets? Like, what's his what's Thrawn's ultimate end game? Yeah. So okay. So we'll do. So then, what in the prequel novels? What they start talking about is because you'd always think like they would have gone to the posts, but this brings it up like Mandalore, the the Mandalorian, the TV show. Like he didn't know that they were going to name drop Thrawn, and when they asked him about it, he said, "Yeah, I didn't know." But he's also said in other interviews that the new the new arcs that he's doing, the new, like he's gonna do three trilogy arcs. So the new ones that he's doing, he's leaving it open so that you can plug and play the old stuff from the arcs back in. And that's why we think the Vong is gonna show up because the Gris could easily turn into that. But what also he kind of is doing is leaving it so that um he does there's he really has detailed in that you're not gonna be able to change some things. And one of the things you're not going to be able to change anymore is his backstory. Cause he, this last uh, novel that came out and there's also a specialty and I'll get into some of the specialty stuff for Thrawn. Some of the stuff that goes really well is this last novel they came up with. And in that novel, they kind of break down how the chist works. They break down that they have the nine families and to make it into the nine families, you either have to be blood, a cousin, you could be like an initiative type person, which has to go through trials or an adoption type person, right? Like, and thr what they do is the families pretty much don't have enough people. So they see these kids that are early on and they, as long as you're not one of these precog skywalkers, they'll like kind of almost vote or outbid each other to try to get it so that those people, when they go through the Chist Academy can bring them like, Hey, you have one of the best admirals. You have one of the best this, you have one of the best that. So the kind of Thrawn, like your dodgeball team, eh? Yeah. So Thrawn's name, the Malamor, whatever, I'm not gonna even try with that one, but that's not his actual original name. That's the family name because they kind of adopted adopted him, but they didn't really adopt him because you gotta be blood trial first. And he does eventually win through the blood trial. Um, very interesting book because just of how they show what's going on. But there's also another portion. Oh, and this brings up a very good character. There's also another portion. So that's the faction. That's pretty much the family. So that's all the aristocrats, right? How the chist works is the aristocrats run pretty much day-to-day -day stuff. They run the planet stuff. They run a lot of stuff. The one thing they have zero control over, they have input, but zero actually control over is the defense force, which is pretty much the Navy, the, the Naval Army type thing. If you get high enough in there, and usually those are family members that are like you somehow are associated with a family, you have to give up your familyhood. So you can't be part of the nine families and be like the grand admiral of the defense force. Like you have to have no affiliations and swear away your families. Brings up a cool character and one we haven't quite gotten into, but also is very important because in Thrawn 6, the comic, she shows up. Mm. Now this character is... Our, oh geez, these, these characters, like if they really want to give you names... Our Elena, I guess, is kind of how you'd refer Ar to her. Or yeah, our Alana. Now, yeah. they That's Raven Dark Home. <laughs> she has red hair. Oh, this is kind of cool. Like on, so on the on the uh, the Chis, the Chis Ascendants, they sh like the 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 defense thing. They show like the Chis Ascendants uh, logo on her shoulder pad, which is really cool there in this picture. But in the last, the very last. Um, portion of Thrawn 6, the comic, they actually introduced that that's where Thrawn ended up sending Eli. So before he ends up getting squeezed by the um, the space whales, they, he actually already had a plan. He sent Eli out to... Out that little man. Yeah, he's like, hey, look, you've got all my stuff. Not only that, but he gives him a journal. He gives him his journal. In, in the journal, Thrawn kind of explains like he doesn't say he doesn't care so much about the Empire, but he's like, listen, not really, like, I'm just kind of using it 
a means to an end so much. Like yeah, he was using them as a tool. He was like, Hey, you know, I need yeah. someone to, to fund my exploration so I can go collect art and figure out all these worlds so I can figure out how to manipulate them best. And he's like, huh, how can I do that? Hey, these guys have a bunch of money. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't say it that much. He says pretty much because he comes up with those TIE fires, the ones they use in the first order. They, those are mocked off of the TIE fires that he creates. It just has so – there's so much more freedom to it, right? And it kind of – he kind of hints that if, like, at any time he feels that the Empire is weak, he's just going to get to be high, you know, become a high member of that, infiltrate it, and weaken them so that he can eventually take them over and – use their people and technology to go back to the Chiss and end up having the Chiss fight the Grisk, who we think eventually lead to the bomb. Okay. So he gives them a journal. They don't go too deep into that. They tell a couple things. The more important part is this. He sends them on a ship, sends them out. And all of a sudden it's like, hi, I'm Admiral or our Aline or whatever of the Chiss defense fleet. And this is where she, sh so she shows up in the net, you know, the big panel there. I hear Thrawn sent you what's going on. And that is where you kind of get like, oh, wait, maybe he isn't all in on the Empire. Maybe he's promising, like Vader in that one book where you see Anakin and it calls him out on it and says, like, you're claiming um, loyalty to the Empire, but I know I can feel it through the Force. You're going to go back. And he says, no, I am. He's like, you're not wrong. I'm 100% going back. The Chiss is really it. Like, yeah, it was all a mirage. I kind of just came down to this planet, wanted you guys to find me, but I also am a man of my word. So I'll help you guys out for as long as I'm here to help you with the problem of like getting rid of the rebellion and squashing the rebellion. But yes, 100%, I'm going back and I'm taking some technology and everything I learned with me. So there's there's no, like the first three arcs that they did that he did back, back when in the 90s and everything, like there's no... Missing that one where he's like, so he's a diehard Imperial, like throwing up the salute and everything like that. He's not that anymore. He a hundred percent is like, Oh, I'm in it for my culture. I'm in it for everything else. Um, so just to, just to clarify back in the air to the empire books, mm -hmm. Thrawn was all in, all in on the empire. He this does. Time, he's more in, in, from what you're saying, there's no illusions, right? Cause, cause even cause early on, he's talking to Anakin. So he really kind of is, pretty upfront with the empire that look, man, I'm going back to chess when I'm done. Yeah. So in the air to empire ones and uh, God, what the heck is the name? I can't, the N command N is the third one. Oh, what's the middle one. Dark I force rising. The okay. last command dark. For, yeah. So in those he well up to the last command, the last command is different. So in those, like he met the emperor already in heirs to the empire and unlike Anakin and then go like, they're weak or whatever and leaving he like knew the empire the emperor and was like yeah cool that guy's cool i need his help in this one he's kind of like hey there's a force user down there i'm gonna set it up i'm gonna go back they're kind of weak but maybe there's something i can use that he doesn't say this but the implication is that he needs force users right um so and he fight tells the emperor huh to fight the grizz or eventually oh well, he doesn't say why they oh. never say why. What what the working theory is, he needs them so that, yes, to fight the Grizz, not as like fist fighting, but to use them as because they're, you can't, he doesn't want to sacrifice. It's very, you don't ever set the precog slash Skywalkers are like, um, you remember in 300 when they climbed the mountain, there's all those virgins up on top and they're doing all the weird thing, but they're like protected the from Oracle. everybody. Yeah. The Oracles, like you don't mess with the Oracles. Yeah. That's kind of how the precogs are like, and one of them gets kidnapped in the first three novels. And like, I think he leaves to, tr my theory is he leaves to try to find adult ones that a, uh, because in the newest book, he can also see like that the kids are really bad off, right? Like they, the, the, uh, the chis think they're doing great by them, but they really aren't. They're not, they're, they're kind of just using them. They're not as, it's not as great of a relationship as you think it and, is. And doesn't don't, correct? I totally could be wrong because this is I'm not very familiar with this. Doesn't he believe that the elder would be more powerful or be able to? to there's something weird about it. Like they uh, might be able to use their power at a greater distance. Or so this is also a problem. The 
precog, the Skywalker program or the precogs can lose their powers at certain points and can't see as much. So if you're older and you can still have that, probably you could use a little bit more. Plus they're kind of trained, like, right? So like he feels like knowing now with Anakin and that was it. I think because he saw an older person, he was kind of like, how do they still have this? So he figured out that they must be training them. They haven't said that yet, but it kind of is leading towards that where you're like, oh, cool. They can feel this. And you could see it in Rebels. Now, knowing that, go back and watch Rebels and be like, oh, this scene right here seems a little bit different, right? Like, at first, you're like, oh, Ezra's got him, right? Now, know the fact that he knows what those are and that they used to use kids to try to do it. And he knows that Ezra's been trained by Kanan. And he was really mad, really mad when Price blew up Kanan, like really mad for some reason. You don't know why. He's like, I'll deal with you later. You know, like, why was that? Why was he so upset that he, like, wouldn't you be happy? He, he took out a Jedi. And, like, why was he so upset at that? And it's like, oh, wait, maybe he was planning on using Water these. Type. Yep. And for a tactician that studies everything, and he got so surprised by Ezra, maybe he did. Maybe he got a little surprised by Ezra. But even when you go through the novels and some of the comics, he, even when he gets surprised, he goes, I learned something and it's not as big of a surprise as we think it. He's never been as big as surprised as we're like, oh, this person got you. Like they never really, like they might've, he might take, he might take an L last night, but today he's right back. Like he never takes a long L. He's always back from it. Well, so, and that goes to right what I was saying about as soon as they the the Thrawn name drop hit, the internet was all over. Oh, Ezra, Ezra, and the space whales. We're gonna see them again. And yeah, me, and I don't think we won't see them. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't know what's going. On. I mean, the Mando. They're just. It seems like at this point, Mandalore, the Mandalorians are just throwing out every single thing they can for every project they're ever going to have again. And then Throw like, the and see if it sticks. And then like, just so that when they pull it out later on, like all of a sudden, like, cause it, hey, they mentioned that they mentioned that. I yeah. know what that is now. So like they're that kind of just open in lanes so that yeah. if they want to drive down that road later in the future, that it's a throwback. Yeah. And well, now you look like a genius. Cause I don't, it's cause, brilliant. Yeah. What, what's that? That's the phony MO man. Drop these little things and he'll pick them up later. And, the one yeah. thing I will disagree with with that using it there is this. Dave has since said, you know, because when that happened, okay, we're looking at like that's like two A B Y when Ezra uses whales to go. Okay, I get it. Like the scene, we all were in the impression that around four ish A B Y is when Soka and Sabine take off. Mando is at like nine ten. You're probably at ten when Soka's outside of the the Korosaka Castle. Like, so for six years she's been like hanging out. Because Dave said like, well he she may have like we already saw the scene at the end, which we knew was at the end of Jedi, like where her and Sabine took off, right? Yeah. So he's saying like that could have could have been or could not have been before the Mandalorian like part where Ahsoka shows up at the castle. Well, if that's the case, if they I was always under the impression that they took off together and then just split back up and went after it. But if the case is that they haven't even gone off yet, you're telling me that somehow you didn't talk to the writer of Thrawn, you dropped Thrawn's name, even though he's right now writing like the stories for it, and then you're going to, like, you're going to what? Like, you don't. You have to have him come in to deal with some of the stuff to flush it out, or this doesn't become a three part arc anymore. It just becomes two arcs, because to have her not take off after. Do you guys see what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. yeah. To to have her not take off after Return of the Jedi with Sabine, that means that Sabine was on Lethal, right? To end of the Jedi. Like, what timeline was that? Wasn't that far into four four AB one. Was it? Yeah. Because yeah. it's too well, no. no it would now do we want to talk about the time space continuum? Yeah, so that's that, it. So, so it could, okay, Pluto, no, let's not talk about that. But Pluto on one that's year different. on Pluto uh, is different from one year on say Venus. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I'm saying, yeah, what you're saying is they <laughs> what I'm saying is what I think what he's saying is like you it could be one of these Dave, and it was exactly the exact and the weird part was. His explanation was it could be or couldn't be the timeline 
of them leaving after Jedi. And that's very similar to what we heard about the in-between. Yeah. You, There's no such thing as time traveling in real life. It could be this. It couldn't be that. We haven't gotten into it. And he definitely had the owl in the woods. So, like, I just hope that that's not it. I hope that they don't do the in-between and she's, like, technically off with Sabine, but then jumps in the in-between and comes back to be in Mando. Yeah, Let's I just... can't see that, man. Well, for Oh, what... you can't? Because well, he did the in between, and you, the in between does not make sense. I know, like, like rebels, like a lot of the folks that were watching, especially the space whales and the in between and all that. There's a lot of people that were starting to get a bit, little lost, right? And then I'm thinking, like, when he came up with the last season of Clone Wars, he was kind of like, kind of correct, course correcting some stuff. And I just don't know if they would go that off left of center but with hey your audience on. your disney audience you know no no time out the last the last part of clone wars happened before rebels no 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 i get that but i'm just saying he is like when he went back and did the last season of clone wars he was trying to fix a little bit of his the gaps and things that he had done from clone wars that he wanted to button up i think he's trying to button up more i i just saw when he was talking about that and I thought it was more of he was just trying to throw people off because he didn't want to reveal anything. Yeah, and that's fine to do it on, with your characters, but then you're also like, well, there's like nothing said it. definitive. Like, with what it's just mentioning his name, like, right. we don't know anything. Like, we don't know that she hasn't found him already. Right. And she's trying to right. find him again. We right, don't right. know if he hasn't found him at all. If right, right. Human, you know, we right. don't know anything. That's what I'm saying. Like, saying, like, it could have been, yeah, it could have yeah. been before Jedi. It couldn't, you're just throwing, yeah. you're doing the world in between again, where you're yeah. just saying, like, all the scenarios out there. None of it's real. None of it's here's real. What, here's what I will say Thrawn and Filoni are very much partially one in the same character as when they go into things, they always have a plan B, C, and D. So if you think that you killed Thrawn in in Plan A, he had a Plan B, C, and D. I I, uh, I, I think trust Filoni uh, also has a Plan B and C. Our, our fan weaknesses and then use it against us. Yeah, I trust yeah. Dave, but there's times you know you could never criticize him, but there's a couple of points where you could be like. Hey, bro, somebody had to clean up your mess because of what you did. Like, he's done that a couple times. So don't ever think, like, he's still human. He has messed up before. Thrawn is not human. He's an alien. He never messes up. Well, well that's uh, what I meant with the last season of Clone Wars. I felt like he was trying to go and fix some of his Clone War messes, you know. Yeah, I think somebody go. well, maybe. But, I, yeah, I think, well, I mean, like, look, the Bad Batch was already there. It was a walkthrough already and some other stuff, too. But, yeah, I, I mean, they did knock on him a little bit and say, hey, listen, we we'll, we give you a free reign, but sometimes you have to go back and clean it up, and sometimes you might have to go back and clean this up. I think they're just like I said. I think they're just throwing oh, everything yeah, out there. And he was like, "Dude, this is not this is not lining up canon wise, buddy." You gotta one, it. one day those two guys are gonna get like you're gonna see a behind the scenes street fight between two guys <laughs> just slapping each other. It'll be hilarious. Um, no, they get along really well. I, I doubt that. Baloney. I doubt that's a situation. I think sometimes he just gets like us too excited and goes down those rabbit holes, and then somebody has to. Real back in his stuff. So let's go over some of the stuff real quickly. I mentioned this book already where they, they just started doing it. This was very interesting. I did not get this one. I didn't get one of these because it sold out so fast. But well, on Timothy's exuberantly expensive, was it not? I wouldn't know what I wouldn't know the actual retail price of this. And I don't think a lot of people did because Timothy put this on his site and said, Hey. For the new book that just came out, for the new trilogy that he's doing, the prequel trilogy to the Thrawn series, which was also the comic, well, the first book was parts of the comic book series, a summary of it. He put out this. You'd get the Heir to the Empire t-shirt and you would get this book, a specialty. You know, they do a lot of these. It was like a cover. It was definitely a different dust jacket and you actually had a holder for the book. It's like- no, that's not Thrawn on that dust cover. That's- uh, yeah, is it? It yeah, does. It really looks good. more like the girl. Look like um, no, no, it's Thrawn. No, but the girl is in that book. She shows up there, and they do yeah. her backstory. But no, that's Thrawn on the cover. It is because when I, you when you look at it, when I've see, yeah. actually seen the cover. So this book, by the time people are starting to ask about it, he's like, because it said all it says is out of print, and there are seven hundred copies of it. You could go online and look for it. Like people are trying to sell them. They sell them, I think, for three hundred dollars ish, somewhere around there. They're asking like four or fifty kind of ish now for them. 
which is not what I'm willing to pay for that. They're not even giving you the shirt and the extras with it. They're just literally giving you this. I, I do love how the pages are thrown blue. Yeah, around the edge. yeah that's really, really cool. Yeah, but, cool. But I would watch out because next year is the anniversary of, it's like, Jeez, uh, that was the nineties, right? So, uh, it must be the thirtieth anniversary of of Heir to the Empire. So I'm willing to bet they're going to do something with that, and he might do something exclusive with it because Leaky asked earlier, like, does he have royalties towards the character? He definitely gets something hey. off of. No, well, he no, that's not 100 percent true. He because he rewrote it, he definitely gets. I mean, all that stuff he gets paid for, right? And obviously, he's throwing out an Heir to the Empire shirt in this package. He gets paid for a lot of the stuff, right? So. That is the one. Do you you think that he gets a royalty off of it rather than they paid him one base? And this was before the show, but uh, just to bring the question up for the audience, I was saying, hey, Timothy Zahn kind of created the Thrawn character, and I'm sure he doesn't get merchandising rights or royalty or any of that. So now he's coming back in and, and doing the new books and writing about Thrawn again. And um, and one, it's it's so he gets a chance to write Thrawn in canon, which you know Thrawn's back in canon. But and and I totally agree with you guys. Zahn is the best novel writer out of all the Star Wars ones. But I'm also wondering, like, what's in it for him now? Like, is is this is can he create a whole new canon Thrawn series? Well, and new, and get, I think he gets. And Mar- Mark I think he totally gets could be right now that Disney owns it. Um, he absolutely could have renegotiated a contract to where he does get rights, and I, I mean, and royalties that'd be a genius thing for him to do. He still gets to get paid for doing a character he created, yeah. No, I think we establish his name from the 90s back into today's audience to make more stuff, yeah. And I think it's a point system because, like, that's kind of how Del Rey works, so I think he gets points, and like, it you know, um, off of the uh. They reprinted it anyway, so if they reprinted it as Legends, I would assume that would be similar to a point system. you know. Well, and, and he's probably getting points on the new novels, probably more, because people, now that it's canon, people are going to want to know a continuing story. Well, so. that's it. So, like, that's why when they re-released it under Legends, you, what's he, who cares if you have points well, or rights to the old book because they re-released it. So as long as you have points to the new book, which is the legacy books or the legend books. Yeah, you also got to figure why would Disney even need to give him point? Like they have all the leverage in the world. They could have somebody else write it. They didn't need him. Oh, right. They, they had, they, they needed well, him. To rewrite no. him. You pretty much need, like it's yeah. shown that it was a good, dis- I don't think you I'm need not it. that he doesn't do a good job at or anything. I'm not no, saying that. You're right. in reality, but they done whatever the hell they wanted. They could have, but, but they didn't have as good of a writing and publishing house as Del Rey. So yeah. I think you kind of have to, you're not just getting him, you're getting all those Del Rey writers to well. If you think about like when you look Mandalore, when you look at Mandalorian or Clone Wars, they still put that created by in there, right? Oh, Lucas gets paid off of all of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well not and not just Lucas, but like created by John Favreau, created oh, yeah. by Dave Filoni. Um, and Timothy Zahn created the character Thrawn. So I'm wondering. Do they almost have to like part of the rules of SAG or or whatever say this character was created by this guy? He might not get any right any extra you know juice for it, but it would whatever they say the that contract. created by he's got to be getting something. It's Depends the Kirby on the contract, the Kirby and, rule. Well, the Kirby rule though. Kirby I mean, rule. like yeah, the Kirby rule. So uh, let's. Written. Yeah, we're probably not going to try to break yeah, down. I don't know. It, yeah, go down that rule, but. Uh, let's wait, talk about Wookiee. But I, Spielberg, on the other oh, hand. Oh, jeez. Okay, no, no. Let's go through some of the other cool Thrawn stuff. Let's go through just some of the other cool Thrawn stuff. So we kind of talked about this already, right? Like all, all these, like, it's great pickups, obviously. Um, and the series are great pickups, too. Good post-reading because you can kind of see that he's changing around that stuff. I don't know if they're going to do the find the storage locker that they did in the last command because it'd be weird to find the storage locker. So for those people that don't know about the last command, he finds the storage locker and then they got these tubes and it's like the cloning of M- Palpatine. It's actually the one part I was very disappointed that got brought back. Um, I don't know if they're going to do the storage locker thing, but um, they might. Who knows? Uh, and, and, sir, you're talking about stuff they'll bring from the old Legends yeah, trilogy. And from the, the old, yeah, from Heir to the Empire, from Dark yeah. Force Risings and from the last command, which were all arcs. You know what I mean? From the, um, I guess it's the best way to put it because they were like, 
heir to the empire. Anyways, like whatever um, works with whatever they want to do. Today. Yeah, whatever the last trilogy was. So yeah, um, because now it's not trilogies; it's like three trilogies he's supposed to write. He's supposed to write the he wrote the current timeline trilogy. He's in the process. He already did one book. He's in the process of doing the pre trilogies. And the rumor is he's going to do a post Thrawn trilogy too. Or we don't Skywalker, know. Be yeah, exactly like that. Absolutely. Um, so, but let's go through some of the comics because the comics are really cool. Um, I own all of them and I own multiple copies of all of them except for one. Cause I sold, cause I thought it was going to be never could get higher than this. I didn't think everybody loved the character as much as I did. I was wrong on that one. Um, this is one, this is the a, uh, for Thrawn. The su- so the comics were pretty much a summary of the first novel. This is where he starts as the avatar from the James Cameron movies, right? <laughs> right, right. right. It also has his first like reappearance under the current can- canon line and has the first appearance of yeah, Eli. As a, as a mini frost giant. Right. He does look he like that. Actually, is, yeah. this is by far the. This actually was the only cover I bought one of. I didn't buy multiples of this. It does have one of Leaky's favorite. Uh, which is the action figure? Yeah, uh, card it the card action figure I one. I bought a couple of these because I, I actually one. really like that. Yeah, so I, I, do, I need that one so bad. I do only have one of these. It's a variant. Um, it was the uh, animation variant. I think those were really, one in tens. The animation. Yep, there was the one in ten. The animation variant. Uh, kind of tricky to pick up. Um, this one, I have a nine eight, and everything that wasn't a nine eight, I sold, uh, or that I thought wasn't that I didn't get graded. Uh, which was two other copies, and I actually was 100% wrong. Hey, Jay, man, I, I love you. I know you're upstairs now. You know, we miss you. Um, I was wrong, man. You were right when uh, you had that on the wall, and I said, $80, that thing's not even a 9.8. It'll never go higher than that. You should sell me that for 40 bucks. And he goes, I'll give it to you for 60 I go, now nah, wait till it's 40 bucks. Uh, you were right, man. Know what that. What going for now? Not 40 bucks. A, <laughs> a, raw, a raw copy where a dude said, like, this isn't even a 9.6, which means he probably pre-screened it. He said, so don't complain about the grade if you're trying to grade it. Take it or leave it. What did it sell for 250 recently? So, like, when you're telling people, like, this is just a – it's not a mint copy. I, I've never seen one. I'm not saying that they're super ultra rare. I'm saying that the people who have them – hold them and they sit on them and you it's a book i have actually never ever seen yeah so i own three um sold one for 120 because i thought that was the height i was wrong uh was wrong so but but i have one still i actually have it i i've kept the 98 copy in my expensive like with my showcase four and those books i Mm. In like my first Daredevil. And when did these come out? This was like 2017, 2018. Yeah, it was a cool book. I actually got it for like $25. So that's why I was mad that he was trying to sell it for 80. He was a good guy. He was a really good guy. Unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. Um actually he's by yours, Abba Comics. I'll I'll mention the name of his comic book place because you know that's how it goes. Like he's part of the family passed away there uh, like a year ago or so. And Jay was a real cool guy. He was kind of ordinary sometimes, always bring his kids to shows. Was a dope dude. He'd give you it as much as he'd get it. Uh, and he stuck to his guns on a lot of stuff. He was a funny guy. I, I enjoyed him. Um, and it, it's really sad when somebody of the comic family unfortunately passes away. Either way, we'll move on from that. He was right. That's what he gets. That's all he gets. This is the only time he was right, and he was right that time. So, <laughs> hey, that's, what that's he all that you need, <laughs> man. That's what counts. <laughs> that's what counts. Number two. Uh, it's number two. This is the A. Oh, and by the way, that was Matina. That was the Matina yeah. cover for those that yeah. don't know that aren't watching the video. It's the Matina cover. Uh, number two. Um, it's got a nice uh, uh, cover of him uh in the background exploding little thing uh oh, the so goofy on that cover yeah i really dislike yeah. that cover oh, i you, love the hey, ship you in the background i love the you know the tie fighters and everything coming out of it and the hyperspace you know lines and he just looks goofy as all get Did they just okay. release the thanos art from avengers endgame <laughs> out or what yeah so two <laughs> okay. if this is when he, if for the people that know the storyline, this is when he kind of intercepts the pirates who actually are technically, uh, it leads into getting into the Night Swan. But 
Uh, and here's the B cover, which is, did we know who this is by? The, or the variant cover, I mean, I'm sorry, the 125. Shadley or something? Shadley. Yeah, not, 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 not much better, actually, to be honest with you. Um, three. cheap recently. Yeah. You found it for cheap? Yeah, it was like seven bucks. Good, get another one. I could probably use a backup. Three has got prices first in it. I yeah. actually like the A cover a lot. I nice. wish I wish it didn't have trade dress on it, um, but it does. Uh, the B cover one was a little more. His face wasn't cut. Like I wish he did. They just would have framed it so. Because they only yeah. like a tiny bit of his face. But it's got the uh, Crimea in the back, or the whatever the oh, no. Crimea kind of. in the yeah in the background, which is kind of cool and kind of show like it's a very interesting part because it's when either way when he goes below the planet. Um, and then the variant, who I think it's a Raz. Raz, and it, the call. I love the coloring on it. It ranks. It, it, I mean, obviously, it's a top three variant in this, and you know, people like it because it's the first price too, which is. And it's, and it's a clean cover. Price looks really well done. She looks believable as a as as like a, a real life. I mean, it's obviously a. a, a cartoon quote unquote but she looks very lifelike in it and so does he he i mean you can see the muscle in his jaw you can see the you know little bit of sideburn in front of his ear you can see the tone in his in his brow like it, it's just a well done cover yeah, the only like problem space above her though like the only problem that i have with all oh, sorry pete the only problem i have with all the variants the 125s for these is this if they just would have gotten rid, if they, I wouldn't, I don't mind the trade dressing for the Star Wars Thrawn. I think that would have been cool if they would have got rid of the Marvel, the number, and the UPC code. Mm -hmm. It looks all like that's the one thing when I look at the Matina, I'm like, man, I just wish, yeah, it. I just wish that it wasn't there. I just wish it said Thrawn across the top in red and there was no UPC code there. But, no. you know, whatever. I guess create your own comic books if you want. Yeah. So, um, I bet you if there's, I, I guarantee you, if they ever do a second series of this, that that uh, the something similar to this, because this was taken off one of the original uh, dust jackets, like the variant dust jacket for one. The, like, a virgin variant of that would just be amazing. Or not, and, just, and not even a full virgin, but like you said, just thrown in red across the top. Yeah, like if you take the dust jacket off of number one and look at the actual cover, you could do something like that. Anyways, uh, we are up to number four. I actually, this is one of the, because it's got Tarkin on it, and I'm a huge Tarkin fan too. I really do yeah. like the four, the A cover. The B cover is by um, uh, Wingard, I think. I don't know if I'm saying the name right. There's like a J in there. Yeah. I know, Silence, it's, I know it's I got, really got us all that well for this. I one. know it's got Palps on it. I know it's got Tarkin kind of on it and Vader. It just is in real life. If you think it doesn't look good on the screen in well, real Tron life, looks like the Joker there. He's yeah. he kooky. He looks like no. from the red looks nice in real life. The red looks nice, but Thrawn looks ridiculous and yeah, a little bit. And he looks like Mel. I mean, thing going on, he's got a little blue steel. Palpatine yeah, looks cool. so much like Mamra when he's when he's under his hood on <laughs> from from Thundercats. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, Palpatine's face looks kind of cool. Draw ears on that Wookie. Just draw now that cat ears. Now that I look at it, Palps looks pretty cool on it. Tarkin looks good. Th Thrawn just is not. It's not up. No. Could be Magnum. It with the atomic, uh, you know. The top three of the 25s. Top, yeah. Price gets price probably is up there. The price one's pretty good. Um, that's probably actually the price. The 25 for price is probably. The, Hard cover, uh, too, because you have against you. You got the black. You got the red. You got white yeah. you got i mean every color that makes a cover a hard cover to get in high grade this one's got every one of them on it and what's with the the general zod phantom zone ring okay so i'll tell you that real quickly so like on jakku there's an observatory that that observatory actually they credit thrawn for being able to use it to use a lot of the information he gave them uh was able to scout out the uh unknown uh space so that's kind of like the thing, the planetary system was like, yeah, he knew a lot about the planetary system and that kind of allowed them to be able to finally do Exegol and stuff like that. So um, that's, I think, what that was supposed to be interpreted to. Um, and actually where the First Order kind of hit out also. Uh, so then after that, we have five. 
love the A cover. Some of these A covers, I think, are are really just better than um, – this is not the case on this one. Uh, the A cover is great. Don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful cover. But the B cover – yeah, <laughs> nice. You got the A. But the B cover is kind of one of my faves. I have this. In oh, the, yeah. It goes – you know, it goes Matina, then this cover. It's Albuquerque. Yeah. Is it Kirky? It's Albuquerque. It goes Albuquerque. The you Matina. got this in a 9-8? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. Good yeah. score, man. Good score. Like, that's, uh, again, it's a all black cover yeah, nothing with, wrong with just a, a line of red through it. I mean, it's just oh, a beautiful. brutal cover. It's so yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that lens flare, like, kind of light source. It. Uh-huh. And honestly, when I was, you know, when I, you know, I, I got, you know, it, you have a good relationship with your comic book stores. Because I'll tell you, I, I didn't buy that for anywhere close to to, to the market. Price, but yeah, no. Well, That's not even that. I bought it on like 70% off sale and it was originally priced at 10 bucks. So, like, I mean, that's one of those covers you look at it and it gets three color breaking spine kicks and you're like, oh, <laughs> I didn't even touch it. I just looked. Yeah, well, you tell the guys, don't <laughs> let people touch the book. Don't let them look at it. Don't let them touch it. I'll buy it when it goes on discount. Um, and they pretty good if you're friendly with your local comic store managers and owners. They usually take care of you. Um, number six. Man. Dope A cover again, man. Oh, got the cover. Emperor there looking it. good. Uh, Darth Vader's looking great. You got all the ships in the background. You actually have like underneath, you got that little chalice, like the chist, like symboling. Um, mm -hmm. If you didn't notice underneath the crime, the crime, crime era. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Real cool. Um, and then you've got what is a surpriser. Well, it's not because of what's in six, but the, uh, and you know, I've got same same thing. Got one of the uh, nice. Yeah, I couldn't get that one. Couldn't find yeah. that one. So that book, I was surprised when you said you couldn't find it. I was like, I'll go check to see how many copies I have of it, because that book's not a cheap book anymore. And I think it really is because of you know this. I mean, if you're going to do something with it on, you have to have her in it, right? Like, especially yeah. now that you have her in the pre novels and the post novels, mm -hmm. she's pretty much going to be the person in charge of the whole thing, and she's like. Thrawn's best friend. Um, well, kind of like protector slash best friend, maybe like they start off on a rocky relationship, but like she sees the um good in him or whatever. She he just has a really hard time understanding why people don't do the right thing. So it's like Papa Smurf and Smurfette. No, she's oh Pete. <laughs> well, she's actually she actually she actually outranks them. She outranks them. So oh. it would be like grandma, grandma, papa smurf, and Oh, because I was going to say it's like Michonne in Black Panther, but if she outranks him, then that doesn't fit. Yeah, she outranks him uh, to the best of our knowledge. Like, I think she's going to be in, I think when it comes down to it, she's going to be in charge of the defensive force because what the guy that it was. Yeah, they're both Papa's, those. Papa's okay. Smurf Let, Jen's not here, so That's we're not calling you Smurfette. That's we're not you calling you Smurfette. Keep, um, uh, remember that Smurf comment because it's going to come up later when we get to the Lego set. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. Let's go through. So we showed you the books, like all the other things. These, like, yeah, that. I mean, good luck getting that type of stuff. You'll spend a pretty penny. You can get, you know, depending on which air, and we'll get into this a little bit. Like, if you're doing obviously the newsstand, or if you're doing the yeah newsstand uh, stuff these days. Yeah, newsstands obviously. There's big collectors for newsstand. The yeah, air, I the actual air. A book. lot of those last commandos out there anymore. Too much. That's because you've been trying to shop around where I shop and I've been picking them up for a dollar because people, I don't think, I don't think people know that that's a Thrawn book. Like, I don't think people know that the last, I, I don't the last command very often. And it's again, it just, is it just me or does it seem like every Thrawn cover is a hard cover? Yeah, that's a hard cover. That's a real hard cover. And when it came out too, it's not like you, you know, some of those books, some of those dark horse books, we'll talk about it one day, but they were in that like fire pallet sale stuff they were doing. So they're like near mint and you just see hundreds of them because people were like, oh, Marvel's going to screw this up and it's going to go back to dark sure. horse and then we'll be ready. So a lot of people stored those just like, cause you were buying it for like 75% off of whatever retail price was anyway. So it was really cheap, but like, those books weren't them. Those books came out way before those fire sales happened. So, and it was a very popular series back then. So those were books that a lot of those books were, as we say, loved. 
All right. Speaking of that, we'll talk about one more besides the new stand and the regular cover. We will talk, Pete, let's talk some toys. Oh, yeah. And the comic pack. Yeah, that was doing, I think, better than the regular now these days, the comic outside of the book, which is weird because I think the comic outside of the toy packaging is actually selling for more than if you can get a hold of the actual toy with the comic inside of it. Very odd dynamic right now. Now, condition on condition on this one's everything because the toy packs all the all the comics in them got destroyed yeah like the last couple toy packs i think sold are like 100 125 and i think when i look today there's only one up and somebody's asking 400 for it so that's the only one available on ebay so yeah be paid, but that think, book itself is still pretty expensive right now yeah i think i think we they're not the the packaging for those compared to the packaging for the Marvel series is a little bit different. Well, it's getting the comic out of the packaging. Yeah, yeah like, that's the problem is getting it out. You're getting that destroyed all the all the comics in there. Was, but do look for those. Pull them out. But do look for those because a lot of them. Let's just say I've I've had I that's not the only one that they have, and I have a, a yeah. lot of you can find them in comic book stores because they think it's a comic book. And you know, and yeah. if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost I'm about ninety eight point eight percent sure that you can get that graded that whole thing. So if you find the comic oh, in, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Toy, yeah you can get that whole yep. piece mm -hmm. graded as one. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean it'll be the different scale. Like if you go back and watch the stuff like we were doing with Mike, where we were doing yeah. the full grading of yeah, like stuff, and, stuff. Yeah, they'll grade it. They'll like, grade. You did get the comic out, you can still, you know, see you see it. And there's plenty of not plenty, but there's copies of them there. They're not cheap. No, no, it's Definitely a cool not. thing, but it's also um a reprint, right? Like, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not like it's a reprint. Um, no, that one. but like you said, keep an eye out on those boxes again. I dollar bin dig too. You see those toy. I always buy the toy. Uh, toy there's copy. a the, always yeah. Buy. Yep, yep, because you'll find them because they don't have the, the it looks almost have, like it's right almost right like a version type. Yeah. Have bottom, all stuff on the bottom corner is blank, correct? It's not no, not blank. No picture, There's nothing there. No no barcode, no nothing. There's not even a blank spot. It's just it's Clean. like it's just there. the whole picture. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna I, I couldn't picture. remember. Yeah, it's just the whole picture. It's like a finish off of a picture. And then when you open up the cover, it'll say because the the comic packs were numbered, so like I don't remember off the top of my head what number that comic pack is, but it'll say comic yeah, pack. I think it's number nine. Okay, comic pack nine, book, book whatever. So it'll say book number one of Heir to the Empire in this date. So it'll tell you where it was. When you open it up, there's a golden ticket inside, and it says Willy Wonka across it, and you're like, I won. Yeah, but there's some good ones. I know Pete with you guys with three card money. You talked to um, what's his name? Uh, oh yeah, we talked to John Jackson Miller this week, so we got that drop in later. And yeah, he actually did mention those comic packs like as being reprints because apart from writing all of Knights of the Old, Re Old Republic, he also uh, owns and runs Comic Run, which I know a lot of us use for uh, sales, not print runs. Don't confuse comic sales with print runs because they're not the same thing. Yeah, that's I think the argument when I talk to people with Dark Horse when they were having their sellout sales that those aren't those are add-ons to the Comic Con numbers that you'll never get, and there was a lot of those books. And that's the thing. Uh, never get the overprints like yeah. numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, just know that with Dark Horse, there's a lot out there because they did have pallet sales. Well, you could get a whole pallet, but what I'm saying, pallet sales was like they were liquidating. Yeah. Um, we'll get into that in a different story. So then we'll go to this one because this is kind of the this is kind of affordable. Yeah, that's the affordable version. This is an affordable version. This is the Black Series. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Black Series are only like twenty bucks in the store, but this one's probably still going to run you sixty to one hundred, depending on how patient you are. I mean, there's auctions. You know, we try to get it cheaper, but the cheapest buy it nows are in that like when you factor shipping in. You're talking seventy to eighty right now, just because oh. the name dropped, so it's going to be a little expensive. But I bet you they're going to. I will tell you this: if you want something that you're not going to get the original one, but you pro they will they are doing a lot of the the re, you know they're re-releasing some of these yeah, yeah, and they're working out better because that one i was just gonna ask and for everyone listening we were looking at the black series thrawn action the figure one. uh the single and this is off of the first run of black series what through a four five piece years go by six years ago how long ago was that i think I it was like i think it was like wave three actually i don't think it was off the first wave it oh, was okay. it was it 
Well, because San Diego, San Diego Comic Con came out, so it came after the San Diego Comic Con one. Because we're gonna hit that one in a minute. Uh, but that wave didn't have like the butterfly joints in it, or it didn't mm-hmm. have. It wasn't as movable as some of these. Newer it's ones. still back in the earlier Black Series issues. Yes, the, the yes. first, the oh, first oh, era oh, of it. era. Yeah, earlier because I think yeah. they're what are wave are they on twelve now or something like that? I don't even know. So yeah, they're on like yeah. ridiculous okay. waves now. But yeah, it was in the not the teens. Um. Speaking of that, here you go, Pete. Oh. You can talk about this, the San Diego one. I'll yeah. you you can control. You want to control the pictures because I don't know what you. No, no, you go ahead. I mean, that, that's the, like the you know, special box that you would have gotten, like if you got this to San Diego. I don't even know what this costs. And this was what twenty seventeen. Yeah, yeah, twenty seventeen. So that's when this yeah. came out. So this is like three years old. I've tried. I thought this was going to come down. It's just, yeah. Right now, it's, it's still never. A it's never. It's never got. This is like the Matina. It just doesn't come down. Like this is the one to have. Yeah. Um, the sales are like three hundred bucks, but right now the ones that up you can get are like two fifty to four hundred. Yeah. For people are asking, so it's not easy. But if you look, yeah, you open it up. There's a lot of cool little knickknacks and extra pieces that they give you. It's. It, uh, it's so this awesome. is the SCD. It's like the exclusive one, but they also call it the premiums or whatever. Like they didn't. They. This is probably the last huge one that they. Well, no, they made a Kylo Ren one, but like that box was pretty large, if I remember correctly. I could uh-huh. totally be wrong, but if I remember correctly, that box was like eighteen. That that box was like two foot tall. That I mean, eighteen <laughs> inches tall, right in that ballpark. It was big. Yeah, probably a little bit over a foot. Yeah. Feet, six inches. It's got to. Yeah, it's got to be over. Yeah, over it's got to be foot. over. It's uh, over a foot. It's over a foot. It's like right around a foot. It's a little bit over. But these are all the accessories you get with it too. So you get like uh, the blaster, of course. You get the cup. Uh, oh, if you see in the background too, you get the little wooden. Uh, uh, what's her name? Hera's little yeah, Hera. snorkel thing. You get the cracked like uh, force rock. You get the characters in the front, like everything that was in his office. Oh, Kate, you get also get Kanan's like can't see out of it visor and a uh, trooper helmet. And then he's holding the saber. Where is he holding? Yeah, yeah, a saber. He does have a saber too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Whose yeah. is that? That was um. Wow. Wasn't it? Which one did he end up getting? Because he has it in Rebels, doesn't Tony he? In the right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Wasn't know. it one of theirs when he? Took it away from uh, Ezra. I don't know. Either way, I, we, it's too late. It is really late here, so it's too late for me to try to remember what that was. But it does, honestly, at 250 300 it kind of is worth it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one of the, that's, I'm, yeah, that's one of those. I mean, do you think it's kind of undervalued at that point? I don't know, man. Like, it's I'm not in the deep buying, but yeah, I don't think it's going to get cheaper. Like, I don't think it's, you're going to worry about it. going to get no cheaper. It's gonna be fifty bucks, and the yeah. problem is I, I gotta open, I gotta open it and pull all the stuff out, and I'm gonna lose something out of it. I, I just, <laughs> I'll probably still buy it. Marco, you know, it's okay to not open them. You can leave them in the box and just yeah, open the box and display it just like it is. Only if I buy three. Only if I buy three. That's um, what you me. Go buy two. One to play with. One to keep. Yeah, and then you're gonna be ending up costing yourself like seven fifty to a grand. <laughs> It's by, it's not by two. Got the the Thrones to fight each other too. It's by three, one to play with, one to own. Look for the loose ones. There are loose ones out there. They might be missing a couple pieces already. Then you just kind of fill them, fill them in. You know, fill in the gaps later. Yeah, because that works well with Star Wars stuff. Uh, fighting like uh, trash monsters and no, I mean like listen. It, that, okay, stuff's out there. And we're not rabbit holing toys. <laughs> if you guys are, by the way, if you guys are watching oh, the series, oh, that we can, we can. <laughs> If you aren't watching the series that Pete's doing on the channel, check it out. He's covering a lot of toy stuff. Um, it's really good. They're kind of short, so they don't take too long, but they give you a lot of information. They're action-packed. They're really good. I really do appreciate them, Pete. They're nice. Um, next up is the – this is you, Leaky. Yeah, so here we go. This this was one that um, I actually bought to get Chopper because they had the Ghost set, and then they had the Phantom – and this was, I, you know, you guys are going to kill me here, but this is before I knew who Thrawn was. I was like, oh, I got Chopper and I got, um, uh, I get the, I get the Phantom and I get a Smurf. So I'm, I, I picked this one up and this, this Phantom actually fits inside of the ghosts. So when you got, and this priest, if I remember correctly, this preceded the ghost, um, 
But earlier today, I was uh, I was looking at this, and I know you're going to go to the minifig next for Thrawn. Yeah, I am. Sorry. Um, but depending upon how this guy photographs, the one I have in person, it's a lot bluer than this. It's yeah. like a dark blue, and I don't know if some of them they did um, the wrong color or whatever, but they literally, it's like having a Smurf. It is. It's. It really is a dark blue. That was the promo Lego pictures yep. from the inside of it, where they made it actually look a little bit more photo appealing. Yeah, it also does. It is like the girl that turned into a blueberry. Speaking of Willy Wonka, I mean, mm-hmm. it is dark. Yeah, and, but that Smurf's got a gorgeous head of hair. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's. Yep. You're turning violet, violet. <laughs> <laughs> they did. Uh, they. It also that pack also came with Chopper him, and then had like a, a terrible face guard, Kanan with it too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I'll be honest. When I got this, I wanted to have the Phantom because the stupid ghost that they sold, which now is you talk about price. Yeah. Holy smokes! You, the 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 ghost didn't come with the Phantom, and everybody wanted the Phantom, so I had to buy the Phantom. And and I I didn't know who Thrawn was, and now I'm I'm so embarrassed, but I'm just I'm. This is like therapy for me. So now I know who he is. <laughs> yeah, well, this is also interesting, too, because that Phantom now, like the Thrawn character, right? The loose minifigure sells yeah. almost for the same as yes. the set. Yeah, the Thrawn minifigure goes for 60 bucks. You can still pick up the Phantom for 89 90 bucks. Um, And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it was a smaller set. It was uh, a small set to be dropping 90 bucks on. Yeah, yeah, two hundred sixty nine pieces. Dollars, like, year old put that together in like thirty minutes. Yeah, but yeah. it's they never did they. I don't think they ever redid the Phantom for one and for two. Like I can't remember. There might have been one more Thrawn, uh, but I don't think so. And same I, with I looked. I could not. I think you're right, but I couldn't find it. And what what bugs me is I love Chopper, mm-hmm. and Chopper's only eleven bucks, and Thrawn is sixty. So I think that goes back to what you were saying, Marco. Is Thrawn mm-hmm. is popular? Yeah. I, well, not just that, but you can find another Chopper and. You, the cannon yeah. is a tough figure too. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, there, there, who's, there, that, there. who's that third figure in there was Cannon, right? Cannon. Yeah. Cannon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got, yeah, you got Cannon, you got Thrawn, and you got Chopper. Thrawn's in this one. Chopper is in one, one other one or two other ones. I think he's in two other ones. He's in two other and ones. And then Cannon, what other ones is he in? He's in. I think he came with the ghost. He also came with a mini mission or something like that. I yeah. Think. He doesn't have the visor on. He comes with something else. Yeah. Ever, if he's on, if you want we'll get a phone here. What's that, Pete? I said if we ever get thrown in something, they'll make a whole like they'll make the chimera or whatever his ship will be. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. We'll, we'll get him, but it'll still be expensive and hard. Please, to get. that'll oh, be yeah. awesome because that'll be like another Imperial Star Destroyer. Especially if they put the design underneath. You know the oh isn't the this, design underneath that would be so cool. That would be so. Isn't this the only Kanan with the visor? It is. It, it is. Looks, yeah, but you can't but even. But the tell visor it. sucks, dude. The visor. I didn't even know what yeah. you yeah. it was. It's, yeah, you, you don't even know it's Kanan. I thought it was like an Endor trooper or something. Yeah, when, I, I got his helmet on backwards. But was yeah. it a helmet or was it a one piece? Was it, <laughs> I can't remember if it was painted on or not. It was whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I mean, like, look, there's a lot of... And the, the cool part about Thrawn is, you know, like obviously with Air, the first book, unless you're going for the Cosmic Packs or the newsstands, which always, you know, those, those reprints are rarities. The one-offs do always command a premium like the air the actual book air of the empire there's like a a bazillion of those but and like hey, i got a i got a quick promo can you go back to the phantom real quick yeah so on low bricks chopper's head is somewhere on the low bricks mock if you can tell me where it is and you you uh shoot us hit us on our instagram uh we were going to give away a stormtrooper minifigure oh nice Nice. That's really cool. So go look at, go down. We got yep. the link to Low Bricks in the description. Go down to Low Bricks, check out their mock, and uh, yep. and you're you gonna have to go to the back episodes to see Chopper's head, and, and he is a decapitated Chopper. And luckily, awesome. can I guess? Because I know where it is. Uh, yeah. Luckily, there's a. They're not as long as my drawn out or these drawn out shows are. So it's really shorter. They're great, especially if you have kids or whatever, or people that like Legos. Or you just like Legos, or you like Star Wars, or you... so for everybody that doesn't know what a mock is, what could you create it? Can yeah, you know it's, it? it's called my own creation. So, like, if you wanted to build the Chimera and put the, you, you yeah, it's my own creation. So it's got to be made out of Legos, 
and uh, and you just build your own stuff. So we we build an entire diorama um, on a ping pong table, and and uh, it's Tatooine is the one we're doing. We're going to do Hoth, I think, next year. But you got to try and make it pretty accurate to what the actual. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, you can add in characters and stuff. What I'm saying is, like, if yeah. you want to enter it, like, you guys are entering it into the show. Yeah, know. yeah, we're going to Brick World. We're, what's that? Are you making it to scale? Yeah, pure. It's pure to scale. Yeah. The mini, you know what? Somebody actually calculated a minifigure scale starship or star destroyer would fit on two football fields. Yeah. Just a minifigure scale one. Jesus. Yeah. I'm okay with that. All when right. Do I, when do I start? <laughs> I couldn't find space in my house for a general, the USS flag, GI Joe. Oh, thing. That is huge oh. too. Football fields, Lego. We need to buy some land, guys. We got to start this. And just get like barns, like get those steel barns. All right. Enough of that nonsense. <laughs> Real quickly to run down, like uh, what I was going to get into. If you find these, great. Good luck. Uh, these are good. These are good. Actually, probably these are good too. Because oh, for, our, for our listeners, he's just running through the covers again. On these all books. the cover ones are good. The all these books are good. The cover threes obviously got first price in them, so both that and the one twenty fives are good. The six, I love them all, so I have them all. But the sixes are also really good. What Pete? Do you, you know what the six is going for? Yeah, if you can find them cheap, I think that six is over. Is that six? The one twenty five is that over? Uh, that's over a hundred dollars now. Isn't oh, it's it? definitely over. I think the ones up right now are like two two fifty. Hmm. Jeez, I can't believe so that. All the covers are a lot cheaper, right? Or, or were these like really, really good finds when we went shopping? They were pretty good finds, but every time you bend them like that, they get cheaper and cheaper. <laughs> so that's all right. <laughs> that's six, which I still got to find out. I got to give away that one six, but that's six. I found a couple last week in the dollar bins, but I sold one for 20. So the six is going, you know. Yeah. So keep pressing it, keep bending it. Yep. Yep. You're. You're betting a twenty dollar book. Uh, I hope <laughs> bags and boards, buddy. Bags and boards. He doesn't have. You see, that's loose. So, um, no, 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 it's not loose. It's in a bag. I just don't have a board. But obviously, we board. found that we found that a month ago for cover price. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. You can still find that stuff out there. It's out there. It's out there. As you say, I don't like because I don't do the eBay thing. So I always hunt for what I can hunt for. Either way, let's. Uh, that's enough of that nonsense. Oh yeah, yeah. And if anybody uh, wants to give me a late Christmas present or early uh, <laughs> New Year's present, like feel free to buy this for me. It's cool. Or three once again, this, bucks or what did you say? Two fifty, three hundred. Well, it's better than the four fifty for this bloody thing. Yeah, that probably going to end up forking out eventually. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, take one. Well, if the three of us all get one a piece, then he'll have his three that he needs. He'll have one he can open. Yeah, yeah, I'll take I'll take one of those exclusive uh, thrones, please. Mm, I should just buy them. Well, no, I should I should buy them before this air, so whoever has them doesn't up the price on them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, like two fifty is the cheapest right now. Someone's sitting on a case of them, going, "I love those guys." <laughs> yeah. Speaking oh, of actually, like, somebody bought a case that you just said that somebody bought a case today. It was a case of whatever's in there. It was a thousand bucks. A mm. case of what? A case of that. Wait, of that Thrawn. That that Thrawn action figure, the, the San Diego one. Yeah. yeah, I looked at because I, I looked at it when we talked about what. We're when did they buy it today? Why did you tell me for a thousand bucks? I would have bought it. I just saw it yesterday, and then I saw it today. Oh. I was like, oh, 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 dang it! How many are in a case? I think it was six. I want to say. Oh. So when I priced it, I was like, "Well, that's a pretty good deal." So maybe no, it's it. probably four because six is what the normal six is what the normal black that's figures true. are in. So it's probably four. Yeah, it was a case and it was like a sealed box, but then you, you get nervous because I think it was also coming from like China. I'm like, I don't know if it's like an the actual oh, that's not, no, be like that's not knockoffs. No. Like so somebody just got burnt on eBay. Who okay. Knows? So that's also part of what caused me pause. Yeah, because what happened? Yeah, somebody so somebody from China came over at uh, San Diego Comic Con and sat in line and somehow no. Okay. Yeah, so they that's that one, and then they made a million of them. This is why I don't buy off of eBay because you never know where you're going to lose your money. Um, once again, let's speaking yeah. of not though, speaking of going someplace great to buy great things, check out our friends over there at Bird City Comics. Make sure you use the code Dark S H D E Dark Side to get 50% off. They're always got great new variants in there, a bunch of other stuff. Go and see our boy Anthony. Hey, if there's books that you need coming up on the FOC, give him a call too. There's old books you need. You don't have them. See what he's got. Got great signature series. 
Once again, go to Bird City Comics, use the code D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E. If they're not having their holiday special anymore, which probably is going to air after the holidays, still, mm. you can get 15% off. So with that Christmas money that you got from Grandma, Mama, uh, <laughs> go down there and buy something, all right? Uh, oh, who else do we got? Oh, we got these guys. Solo, give it to us. Please, guys, go and check out our friends there at Comic Barricade that have now the comic barricade xl they also have card stopper these things are great and please 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 go buy these so you can fight the dreaded spine tick nobody likes your books falling down on your box and now there is a way to stop it i'm buying those today i don't want to hear any more uh, ragging on me next time <laughs> you still need those boards 10 percent, yeah 10 percent yeah, off if you use the code flip side but I'll tell you this, they also come in great handy when you have to move your boxes around, which is a pain in the butt, Yeah, but they are handy. All right, Solo, give it the rest of it to us and take us out of here. Please, everybody, go and check out Four Color Creations, some of the greatest and coolest stuff that you will ever see, and everybody should have at least one, if not more. Then go over, force push that like and subscribe. Go over and saber smash that bell so you can be alarmed when these voices and faces come to you from the far reaches of the galaxy. May the force be with you. Always. Always. Back club. Nah, throng club.